Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about checking questions with grammar. Checking questions are really important for teachers. A lot of what you're doing is organizing the classroom, setting up activities, but also introducing new things, right? So part of your job as a teacher is checking that students understand, uh, checking that they're ready, checking that everything's going okay. Um, so one of the best ways to do this is to ask checking questions. Okay, so this video is going to be specifically about checking questions with grammar, but checking questions can also be used with lots of other parts of the lesson. So here are some of the ways that you can use checking questions. The first one here is instructions. Okay, so you can use checking questions when you're giving instructions to check that students understand the instructions and that they know what they have to be doing, okay? So these are called instruction checking questions or ICQs, okay? Now I have other videos about giving instructions and uh, checking instructions, okay? But uh, let's move on, so vocabulary, okay? So you can use checking questions to check that students understand the concept of a new word, okay? What a word means, what it doesn't mean, how we use the word, and so on. So these are called concept checking questions. When we ask checking questions with vocabulary, they are concept checking questions. Okay, probably the one that you're most familiar with, because um, most people think of CCQs as comprehension checking questions, is listening and reading comprehension. So of course we can use checking questions to check that students have understood a listening material or a reading material. Very common and these are uh, CCQs, comprehension checking questions. Okay, but the last one here is what we're going to discuss today, uh, grammar checking questions. Now, I haven't actually checked but we might be able to call these GCQs perhaps? I'm not sure. Okay, but so um, here's a list of kind of the 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 different parts of the lesson when you can use checking questions. You should use as many questions as possible, okay? My suggestion as a teacher is talk, talk, check. Talk, talk, question. Talk, talk, check. Okay, so you should be asking lots of questions um, during your lessons. Okay, so let's get on to talking about grammar checking questions in this video. Okay, so I'm going to give you some examples of different grammar and examples of checking questions first. Okay, so here is the first one um, and the sentence. This could be the target language perhaps. He went to the shop on Monday. So this is the sentence and underlined you can see went. Okay, so I guess this lesson is about simple past verbs or perhaps there is a dialogue and, and there's been some confusion about maybe irregular simple past verbs. Okay, so in the red you can see the checking questions. Is he at the shop now? Okay, what's the answer? No, he's not at the shop now. Did he go in the past or the future? Okay, so he went to the shop on Monday. Is it the past or the future? Okay, of course the answer is the past. Okay, so those are some simple checking questions for checking this expression. There's some more ideas later in this uh, video about checking with tenses as well. Okay, but let's just have a look at some more uh, checking questions with grammar now. Here's another example. Uh, the sentence is, he's too small to press the button. So here is the target language. Here are the checking questions. Is he tall? What's the answer? Yes or no? No, he's not tall. What does he want to do? Okay, so he wants to press the button. Can he press the button? Is the answer yes or no? No, <laughs> why not? Well, the answer is he's too small. Okay, now of course this example actually uh, you could also do some drawings as well, visual checking with some pictures. Okay, but these are the examples of the checking questions you might use. Okay, so here is some more examples of target language. Uh, if it rains, she will take an umbrella. Okay, so conditional sentence. And here are the checking questions. 
Do we know 100% what the weather will be? What do you think? Are we 100% sure it's going to rain? The answer is no. Okay, maybe we are kind of 50%. Does she need the umbrella in sunny weather? No. If she takes the umbrella, how is the weather? Okay, if she takes the umbrella, how is the weather? The weather is rainy. Okay, so those are some examples. Okay, and some more target language now. When he was 24, he had never been to China. He has now lived in China for six years. Okay, so this is past perfect tense. Okay, and here are the checking questions. Did he go to China before he was 24? Yes or no? Okay, the answer is no. Okay, what part of the language can we get the answer? Okay, which part of the sentence? He had never been to China, okay, before he was 24. Okay, is he living in China now? Yes or no? The answer is yes, he has now lived in China for six years. Okay, and how can, final question, how can we change this sentence with since? Okay, now of course uh, you, you need to check that students know for and since. Okay, so he has now lived in China for six years. Okay, so if we change for to since six years ago, right now is 2020, so six years ago is 2014, right? So, he has now lived in China since 2014. Okay, so we can change the sentence. Okay, so those are some examples of various uh, checking questions to check students understand grammar in sentences. Okay, but I've got some more ideas for you, other ways of checking. This is a really useful one, actually. Um, this is something that I learned about the, the first time I did a TESOL certificate in 2005. Um, and this is kind of a nice way of expressing visually about tenses. So often when you're teaching, you're teaching uh, different tenses. It's quite a big part of English teaching. Um, and you can use these timelines, okay? You can use tense timelines to show visually what is meant by tenses, okay? There's a lot of examples of these online, um, and actually I wouldn't suggest that you show them all at once like this, okay? So uh, you can have a look online, but if you're gonna use these tense timelines, uh, I suggest just take one or two. You could have two to compare the differences between tenses, for example, uh, present perfect and past perfect. Okay, so you might have, um, you know, two to kind of compare. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't overdo this with the students. I wouldn't show them too much at one time. Um, but when you're giving examples and perhaps you have like a, a dialogue or a story and um, you may have some examples on the board, um, just visually showing the tense with a timeline could be very useful for a lot of students who, who kind of understand things visually, okay? So yeah, think about using tense timelines for teaching and giving examples and also for checking as well. Okay, some more ideas for checking grammar. Okay, so um, this is kind of a percentage line or a probability line. Um, there's different ways of using this. It could be a truth line, a reality line, and so on. Um, and as I said, there's, there's a few different ways of using this with different types of expressions and grammar. So this could be a, a truth line to establish probability. For example, must be, could be, might be, and can't be. Okay, so must be would be on the 100% side. Can't be would be on the 0% side. Okay, so using this kind of gradient, uh, you can plot different expressions, grammar expressions, and then you can start giving examples and plotting those on the, the line. And then you can ask students to uh, maybe suggest where something would be on the line or giving some examples and placing it on the line. 
Okay, this could also be a reality line to establish degree of reality or imagination, for example, in conditional sentences. Okay, so zero conditional would be 100%, and then uh, going through the conditionals, first conditional, second conditional, third conditional, would be going down towards the zero percent, okay? Um, so if I were a unicorn, I would fly over the city. There's zero percent chance I'm going to be a unicorn, so that would be on the zero percent side. Okay, um, one final idea for this is clients to show grades or scales, okay? Now, I did actually find this idea of uh, using this for colors, which I thought was quite nice. Um, yellow, amber to orange. So amber is kind of the, the middle mixed color between. Um, but you can also do this with um, uh, frequency adverbs, okay? This would be a very common one with frequency adverbs. So you'd have always on 100%, never on 0%, and then you can plot the other words like usually and sometimes uh, onto the gradient. Okay, so this kind of gradient is good for showing and giving examples, but then also for checking as well. So, you know, get students involved, get them writing on the whiteboard, for example. Okay. Some more ideas for checking grammar. Okay, have a look at this picture. Now, is this suitable? Uh, in a business meeting, the boss is talking to two people and one guy says, what's up? Okay, of course, that's not uh, the right register. Um, and this is a formal situation, so informal language is not suitable. Um, so, yeah, discrimination to check function or register, okay? Using pictures, using examples like this to check. Um, yeah, so, you know, register and using the correct kind of sentences is quite important in English. Not as important as Korea, where you have Panmal and Chandetmal, um, but, uh, you know, we can also use discrimination of different situations to kind of uh, work with register. Okay. All right. So, some more ideas for checking grammar. Okay. This is a good tip, actually. Uh, negative checking questions. Now, a lot of people, um, when I see people teaching, uh, a lot of people ask checking questions where the answer is yes. Okay. So, try to break that habit. Um, you can, it's important to use checking questions where the answer is no. Okay, so ask silly questions, ask strange questions. It's funny, but it's also checking. Okay, so here are some examples. Do you drink a burger? Is that right? Do you drink a burger? Okay, uh, of course, no. Get the students to correct that sentence. And then the next one, she is happy. Is it right? She is happy. Okay, of course not. So get the students to correct the sentence. Okay, so giving incorrect examples or negative questions, negative checking questions, uh, really does actually check that students are paying attention and understand the different grammar points that they might need. Okay, let's move on. So more ideas for checking grammar. This is the final tip I want to give you. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, is it okay to use uh, other languages in the classroom besides English? You know, is it okay to use Korean if all the learners are Korean? Uh, I would say generally uh, try to keep it as a, at a minimum because when learners are in the classroom, it's, it's better to expose them to as much English as possible. You know, giving instructions in English, asking questions in English. Classroom language is a big part of the learning process, but translation occasionally and specifically uh, can be very useful and it's a very quick way of checking that students know a word for example but also for checking that they understand a grammar point if they can translate it into their own ang um, language so where appropriate or possible i would suggest translation is okay okay i've got one example here this is an interesting example because uh, English and Korean is generally quite different. But in this grammar point, possessive, um, it is actually the same. Okay, uh, obviously the, the, the suffix is different, but, um, but the, structure, the, the structure, the form of the grammar is the same. Okay, so Edward's book. Okay, so you can 
circle or draw attention to possessive s and ask learners how do we change this into your language in this example korean okay so uh, in korean the possessive s turns into li okay and as i said the form is the same in korean so that's really interesting so um transforming small points of grammar from english to another language for the purpose of checking i think is okay okay so those are my suggestions and ideas about using checking questions and other ways of uh, checking students understand grammar you should really use lots of checking in your teaching it's a big part of uh, what you should be doing okay i hope that was useful thank you very much